Faults of the Wonder State by Henry Cunetta. I have, as usual, been brooding over the intricacies of modern civilization. It seems to me that life is particularly futile business. This mood of mine may perhaps be attributed to my recent tragic encounter with a horse at the corner of 42nd and Broadway. I shall not dwell upon the incident, save to mention briefly that a horse should at least be careful of what they eat. One never knows the result of the most innocent action that by insubstantial degrees brings me to the subject of this article, playing fair with fans of fantastic decency. It has been said, and very loudly too, that fans love fight a lot. Well, I do not care to refute that. I happen to know that California fan, a Mr. Arkwen, in the habit of knocking down visitors and knocking them in strategic places, question naturally arises, does fancy lead to sadism? I am remain of the uh, remarkable case of Scarlet Oak. I reminded of the remarkable case of Scarlet Oak God, an ardent fan whose tinnitus led to the occasionally called a diminutive of, of Fanny. This may seem somewhat confusing to first glance. Let us therefore go hastily to the next firecraft. I should perhaps mention a more mysterious white-bearded gentleman called Tubbuff, the damned, or Toby, since he played a significant role in the incident. It was he who listened, toying a beard oily, while Scarlet feverishly held a position against the onslaughts of her foes. Just what caused the argument I cannot recall at the moment, nor does it matter. Especially, I believe it had something to do with Scarlet being locked out of the sanctuary or washroom by previous arrivals. Mocked, scorned, and jeered at, Scarlet at first said nothing untimely. Ultimately, however, she lost her temper of cursed her enemies roundly. I would, she observed, be feeling sell my soul to the devil in order to attain vengeance. At that moment, the white-haired gentleman smiled unpleasantly and vanished. Simultaneously, lightning struck the sentry and demolished it to a natural disconfederate of the occupants. Laughing, triumphant manner, Scarlet departed. The seeds of doom were already sown within her soul. Not until she soaked to the skin did she realize the ghastly and hideous truth. Then looking up, she saw that above her hovered a small black cow with rich rain was steadily descending as she realized the terror of her position. Black horror flooded the girl. She had become allergic to weather. Well, after that, of course, matters got steadily worse. She had driven from home after blasting the bathtub and spoiling a valuable Gora kitten. It was later made with muff, but moths got into it. What, however, is another story, not an especially good one. Poor Scarlet was excluded from all fan gatherings, sunstroke and eclipse, made a constant companions. So he came up deluge. It was gone with the wind. The girl was utterly friendless. She roamed wildly here and there, haggard, careworn and miserable. It had a gown made from covers of amazing stories. A night people could hear her moaning under the windows. The windows and huddled close to the fire, whispering fetches of, of the rum. There'll be evil walks to the ball tonight. I feel my soul shuddering me. No soda, thanks. Home, plus and forlorn, Sir Scarlet strode away, a schooner but out to Song Con, but she discovered curse of Jonah, and set a soul on a cannibal in the South Seas, the best in disguise, the natives mistook her for goddess. They used to, they were used to bad weather, not to attribute the uh, ultra climate to Scarlet, so she garlanded her with lays and made her the queen, and she reigned happily ever after.